As a birthday gift, Zoe gave her niece an electronic piggy bank that displays the total amount of money in the bank as well as the total number of coins. After depositing some number of nickels and quarters only, so we only have nickels and quarters, the display read money $2, number of coins 16. How many nickels and quarters did Zoe put in the bank? So let's define some variables here. Let's let, let's let n equal the number of nickels and let's let me I'll write let here let's let q be equal to the number of quarters the number of quarters so how many total coins do we have well, it's going to be the number of nickels plus the number of quarters so we have the nickels plus the quarters need to be equal to, well, it tells us we have 16 total coins. So if we add up the total number of nickels plus the number of quarters, we have 16 coins. So that's one equation right there. And then how much total money do we have? Well, however many nickels we have, we can multiply that times 0.05, and that'll tell us how much money we have in nickels. So 0.05 times the nickels plus the amount of money we have in quarters. Well, that'll just be 25 cents per quarter, or 0.25 of a dollar. So let me write 0.25 times the number of quarters. For example, if I had four quarters and no nickels, I'd have four times 25 cents, which is $1, and no money due to nickels. So it's however many nickels times 5 cents, plus however many quarters times 25 cents. That's the total amount of money I have. And her piggy bank tells me that that is $2. That is equal to $2. So we have two equations with two unknowns. We can solve for n and q. And let's do it by substitution. So let's see, the easiest thing that we could do here, let's solve, let's solve for q over here. So if n plus q is equal to 16, we can subtract n from both sides of this equation. So if n plus q is equal to 16, if we subtract n from both sides, we get q is equal to 16 minus n. So all I did is I rewrote this first constraint right over there. So since this first constraint is telling us that q, the number of quarters, must be 16 minus the number of nickels, in the second constraint, every place that we see a q, every place we see a quarters, we can replace it with 16 minus n. So let's do that. So the second constraint, when we make the substitution, becomes 0.05n plus 0.25. Instead of q, I'm going to write 16 minus n. 16 minus n. That's what the first constraint tells us. q must be 16 minus n. That is going to be equal to $2. We're solving the system by substitution. Now let's see if I can simplify this. So you have 0.05n plus, let's distribute the 0.25 times the 16 and the 0.25 times the negative n. 0.25 times 16, that's the same thing as 1 fourth times 16. That's just going to be 4. And then 0.25 times negative n is minus 0.25n, and that is going to be equal to $2. Let me scroll down a little bit. Actually, I could continue. Well, I'll scroll down a little bit. See, we have 0.05n minus 0.25n. So if I have 0.05 minus 0.25, so let me combine these terms. So if I have 0.05 of something, and I'm going to subtract from that 0.25 of that something, that'll give me negative 0.20 of that something. If I combine these two terms, I get negative 0.20, or negative 0.2n. And then, of course, I have the plus 4. Plus 4 is equal to $2, or we could even just write 2 there. Now we can isolate the n on the left-hand side by subtracting 4 from both sides. So let's subtract 4 from both sides. And we are left with, on the left-hand side, negative, I could just write that as negative 0.20n is equal to 2 minus 4 is negative 2, is equal to negative 2. And then we can divide both sides by negative 0.2. Divide both sides by negative 0.2. Or I could write negative 0 0.0, negative 0 0.20, the same thing. We're not going to go too deep into the significant digits and all of that. We're assuming that we have infinite precision on everything. So negative 2 divided by negative 0.2. These guys cancel out. And we are left with n is equal to, the negatives cancel out. 2 divided by 0.2 is just going to be 10. 
n is equal to 10. And then we know that q is equal to 16 minus n from the first constraint. q is equal to 16 minus n, which is 10, which is going to be 6. So Zoe put in 10 nickels. She put in 10 nickels. I want to do that in a different color. She put in 10 nickels and 6 quarters and 6 quarters in the bank. And we can verify it. So clearly she has 16 coins. So that part makes sense. 10 nickels, 6 quarters, that's 16 coins. That makes sense. And we can also verify this is the right amount of money. 10 nickels, 10 nickels are going to be 50 cents, 10 times, uh, 10 times 5 cents each. So it's going to be 50 cents. And then 6 quarters, 6 quarters is going to be $1.50. So it's going to be $1.50. So the total amount of money she has is $0.50 cents plus $1.50, which is $2. So it all works out.